Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to the latest episode of our entertainment show. As you know, in each, each week in part three of our entertainment show, we premiere a new TV series or movie that is debuting in Ireland and the UK for this upcoming month. And up for discussion uh, this week is a movie that's debuting here in Ireland around St. Patrick's weekend. It's called Righteous Thieves and it's got to do with... Um, High status in terms of uh, a gang uh, infiltrate that steal back uh, valuable paintings uh, from well known uh, Nazis or former neo Nazis that have conspired to take these paintings uh, against their will in terms of the World War, after World War II, in terms of looting that went on, in terms of valuable arts. This assigns a rogue team. Uh, led by the one and only Annabelle, who's our special guest uh, actress uh, this evening. We'll come to her in a moment. Uh, they're a special assembly team. They go around trying to steal back all these masterful paintings. It's an all-star cast. It features Cam Giganes, uh, Jania Lee Ortez, Carlos Mirandas, uh, Michael, Michael Fulteron, and Brian Cousins. And our special guest this evening, the one and only Lisa Vidal, who plays the commander or chief of this rogue sort of team, Annabelle. And uh, Lisa, I was looking at the, the t- trailer for this Righteous Thieves, and uh, uh, there's a, I dare I say, just a comic note to start off, but there was a, actually, going back a few years, there was a famous Simpsons episode. Uh, you might have heard of it or seen it uh, with Monty Burns, actually, and uh, Grandpa Simpson in terms of stealing back all the sort of German sort of uh, paintings in terms of that. And it was just a cartoon sort of make, but the, the premises was just the sort of same and it just sort of struck a bell. But this this movie that you have there, there's a bit of comedy, there's a bit of humor in it, it's lighthearted in it to an ex- sort of an extent. It's got that fun sort of Mission Impossible type sort of vibe to it, but it's sort of, dare I say, it's not over the top in terms of outrageous content. It's a movie that all family members, no matter what what their age, can enjoy. Absolutely. It really is. And that's that's really, uh, that's one of the great things about the film. And by the way, it also stars uh, Sasha Mercy. She's a wonderful uh, actress, comedian that's new on the scene. And she's uh, she's really fun to watch. Um, but no, I did not catch that episode of The Simpsons. But, you know, it is interesting because when you're it, it's kind of it, it's interesting to find the balance when you're telling a story like this and you're trying to create some action and a little comedic moment. But then you're really talking about a serious, you know, matter and a serious um, time in history that was so painful and so hurtful to um, so many people, obviously, the Jewish community first and foremost. Um, so we, we, we really tried to find that balance, you know, and I think that the film um, does that uh, pretty well. And, uh, you know, with the, the comedy, the, the depth of the emotion, Annabelle's passion about it, and the, you know, the, the, the comedy, the chemistry between the team and the action. Yeah, it, it's, there's a lot going on. <laughs> And dare I say, Lisa, in doing, uh, doing further research about your character, Annabelle, uh, without giving too much away, dare I say, she's not all what she seems to be made out to be either in terms of her objectives and reasonings. Yeah, you know, I, I think without giving too much away, um, there's a lot of twists and turns in the film uh, that uh, that will surprise people. And um, she's she's kind of a master of doing this, you know, and she's been doing this her whole life. So she she has her own agenda. And I would say that sometimes she gets ahead of herself, but um, but she's quick to correct. And she's she's a strong lady. She's determined. And Lisa, can I ask you about the action scenes and the actual sort of stunt scenes in terms of breaking into these sort of premises, in terms of all the security that goes around these high valuable arts, in terms of the the try and evade all these systems to try and bring back and recapture some of the sort of those paintings? Were they sort of fun to shoot in terms of that? Was your character... Was your the character the mastermind in terms of orchestrating it from a distance or were you involved in some of those heists themselves there, I say? Um, well, uh, I, I can't quite say too much about that because then I'll give something away, but uh, we all have 
some action going on. And Tony Nardellillo, who uh, directed the film, uh, made sure that we all looked like badasses. I was like, you make me look real good. Um, and, you know, I really, it was important for me um, as a Latina woman over 50 um, to have badass scenes because it's like, you know, we always want, you, I, I'm like, show respect to the older and the wiser. We're not, we're not dead. <laughs> you know, we can fight too. And so Tony gave me some fun fighting scenes, but the other cast members really worked really hard on, on the action. There was a lot of stunts and um, some serious fighting scenes. So yeah, and Annabelle, she is the mastermind, she is. And um, you'll see how everything plays itself out. And in terms of your appearance within the movie, were you sort of pitched as a sort of FBI, sort of lead type of a woman, highly dressed, sophisticated, uh, uh, an awful lot of an expense in terms of your costume or as dare I say a high roller type was that the way Annabelle was sort of presented to the viewers yeah so so my girlfriend Jolene Rodriguez who produced the movie with Broken English uh, films um, you know this role was originally written for uh, to be played by a, a male actor and they decided you know what we want to make her female we don't see that enough we want her to be a strong Latina female. And so with that, we started to collaborate about who Annabelle was. She's the CEO of this organization. You know, she's got to be well-dressed. She makes money. Um, she's presentable and she's strong. So we wanted to really, um, you know, play that out in her look, you know, that she's put together and she takes, she takes uh, pride in, how she presents herself as the CEO, as the mastermind of this organization and this crew. So yeah, well, that was that was very collaborative. And Lisa, in terms of the shooting of the movie now, in terms of from start to finish, in terms of uh, production, how long did it sort of last? How long did it sort of take? Was it a six to eight week shoot? And where did you shoot? Did you shoot in Los Angeles or New York or was it a Canada production? We shot in downtown LA. And we basically shot in the area of downtown LA and in this, I think one or two buildings that were actually, that are actually owned by the gentleman that owned Brooklyn, Broken English Productions. So um, that was a way to save money. You know, we were on a super tight budget. Uh, so honestly, what they did with the budget and the look of the film and where we shot is amazing. Um, I don't like shooting in downtown LA. It is sketchy as all heck. <laughs> it is, it's, it's, it's got a lot going on down there, but, um, but we made it through and <laughs> we, we made a good looking film. And I suppose Lisa, in terms of the chemistry of the cast, you have that sort of strong sort of, uh, bond, uh, with Bruno who played by Cam Guinness in terms of that sort of banter over and back uh, between the two of you. Were you just a good fit from the beginning in terms of from the first day you walked on set? And did you know he was attached? And did you know you were attached? Did he know you were attached to the project before you got on to the first day of filming or shooting? Or was it just a, an instant connection between the two of you? You know, we I, originally, I didn't know that he was uh, going to be in the film until um, before production. And um, I loved Cam, I thought he was great. Uh, I loved his whole persona, the way he played Bruno. Um, we'd never worked together before. Uh, I did know uh, Jaina Lee Ortiz, we, we're close girlfriends. We've known each other for a long time. Uh, I knew Sasha Mercy. I did not know Carlos Miranda. And we had, we all had really mad chemistry because we all wanted this film to win and we wanted it to go well, especially to support our friend Jolene Rodriguez, the producer. Um, and Cam really played the role well. He, he pretty much stayed to himself a lot. He wanted to give that kind of oddball, I, uh, odd guy out feel, and I think it worked really well, but he's, he's a super nice guy. So we all got along really well. And in terms of the long working days, in terms of coming in the morning, in terms of outfit, uh, block locations, offshoot location sites, were you talking uh, 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. type of shoot or even longer? 
you know, they were long days. I don't remember the exact amount of hours, but it was, it was sometimes dark when I'd leave my house. <laughs> it was definitely dark when I'd get home. So we worked really, really hard. And I suppose that uh, Lisa, in terms of the concept as well, for every good movie, it's a, it's a mix between a uh, fiend and foe in terms of that. What well, your, your, to make a good movie, your, your, your best friends have to be as strong as your best enemies. And the enemies uh, in this movie played by Brian Cousins, who plays Otto Heisen and Van der Hoef. And uh, they're obviously, they're the, the, let's say, the protagonists. But they are so important to this sort of success because there has to be, to make a good sort of an action movie in terms of heist, there has to be the good and the bad element. And if the good element is strong, the bad element needs to be just as strong. Absolutely. Absolutely. I had a lot of fun working with Brian. Um, he, he brought a great character to life. And I think that uh, you'll see us go toe to toe with each other. And Brian was really funny. He was like, wow, you're you're a fiery, feisty one. And I was like, yep. <laughs> you know, he's so much taller than me. Um, but yeah, we, we had a really good time working together. And I thought that, you know, he really brought that protagonist out there and and the threat of of you know what he could what what Heisen was capable of doing and who he was so yeah that's pretty pretty clear in the in the film and Lisa when you landed the role did you do a bit of uh, research into terms of uh, the paintings in terms of doing a bit of research into your Van Brandt your Van Brandt's and your Van Gogh's and your Rembrandt's and uh all the sort of famous pacing for did you try to get more knowledgeable about the arts and the art sort of industry did you say, say to yourself that i want to discover a bit more about this so i can look more informative uh in production on set that i know what i'm talking about absolutely absolutely and jolene was really great about and tony too uh about getting us information you know for us to really understand this and and what was going on and what happened and why this was so important to us. And also, I, I, I've i always loved art. I grew up in New York City and I was constantly going to the art museums. Van Gogh is one of my favorites. And just, um, yeah, I'm kind of enamored at all the beautiful art that's been created and the art, the, the pieces of art that were stolen uh, during that time, just beautiful pieces of art. Um, so yeah, I was, I was, the, 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 the story definitely had a personal, um, effect on me and I was interested in the story personally. My husband's a Jewish man. Um, so my kids are half Jewish, you know, his family, they have, uh, family that are Holocaust survivors. So this was an important story for me to be a part of telling, you know? Okay. And Lisa, in terms of landing the role, was it a normal talent agent role going for an uh, audition? Did you have to do Zoom auditions? Did you do uh, auditions in person or were you offered the role where you sounded out for the opportunity? Yeah, Jolene offered me the role. Yeah, that's because yeah. we're friends and um, she knew she wanted me to play this role. So she just called me up and asked me if I would do it. And she sent me the script. I read it and I loved it. The character I love the subject matter so I, I signed on. Okay and Lisa is it a busy time for you now for the remainder of uh, 2023 with future projects in the works that might be coming our way in Ireland and the UK maybe guest appearances uh, maybe another TV series movie that movie maybe in the pipeline that you might that you're you're not restricted to, to that you might be able to tell us about that there's no restrictions on? Absolutely. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I have a nice little recurring role on the third season of The Miss Pat Show, which is a hilarious comedy, half-hour comedy on BET+. Plus. Uh, Miss Pat is, is a, a well-known comedian, and it's a really funny take on a family show. So, and also I'm on um, the second season of the Amazon Prime show called With Love. Um, and I have a few uh, projects in development right now that, that I'm praying um, both where I would be the lead um, that they come to fruition. You know, trying to, right now I'm in the place of my career where I wanna be a part of creating the roles I wanna play. And I wanna have a hand in that. So that's what's going on right now. 
And Lisa, I know you're much traveled and averse uh, in traveling the world and you're very proud of your Latino heritage. Has your Latino heritage ever got a fondness to, to seek out a bit of Celtic heritage, dare I say, in, in terms of uh, the, the Vikings and the Celts and visit the Emerald Isle and see the Blarney <laughs> Stone and the, the castles and the Norman castles and the Viking castles of Ireland? Absolutely, absolutely in capital letters. I can't wait to make it to that part of the world. Uh, everything I've ever seen is so beautiful and so historical. And I, I, I watch so many shows, you know, that oh my God, you know, just to feel like I'm there. So yeah, I'll make it there at some point. We'll see. And finally, Lisa Fidel, for the last 30 seconds, we might in you, uh, who plays Annabelle in Righteous Teas, we might turn it over to you. You might enlighten all our audience, all our listeners, all our viewers, why they should tune in on mass, go to the cinema over St. Patrick's weekend, tune in for Righteous Teas, and uh, what's in store for them? Yes, I think that everybody should tune in because it's a fun, exciting film to watch, and they're great characters, and the subject matter is you know, so heartfelt and so, so important. And also, you know, you get to see Latinos because it's a mostly Latino cast doing something really great, you know, really terrific actors. And it's, it's not playing negative, negative stereotypes, which I'm really proud of that. So yeah, go see it, rent it on demand. Yeah. On, no, on that note, Lisa Vidal, for me, Jim Conlon, absolute pleasure talking to you on the airways uh, this evening. Stay safe, take care, and God bless. James, God bless. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.